I'm Bill Crum from News OK and The Oklahoman. We're here today with Brian Mon, who's the Oklahoma County Commissioner from District 2. Uh, thanks for being here, Brian. I appreciate you having me. We're uh, going to talk about the county jail. The county jail has been in the news recently. Uh, there's a proposal that uh, Commissioner Mon has got to expand SHINE, which is a community service program that is designed, at least in part, to relieve pressure on the jail. Uh, SHINE started in 2010. Uh, tell us what the acronym stands for, if you don't mind, and what was the driving idea behind this creation? It stands for Start Helping Impacted Neighborhoods Everywhere. It's kind of a long acronym, but we wanted to brand it on purpose so that people could know what exactly was doing this and creating this effect, similar to MAPS. And the driving force behind the original concept of the program really came from the public defender, Bob Rabbits, who said there was a program in Nevada where they were removing graffiti and using people who had otherwise been sentenced to jail, getting them out of jail, reducing their prison time in exchange for providing that service to the community. And we were certainly beginning to have a growing problem of graffiti. And so after about uh, a couple of weeks of exclusively focusing on that, I realized we had so many participants to choose from, unfortunately, at the time that I thought it really had room for growth as a program. So I asked if there was any prohibition to extending it to schools, parks, and neighborhoods. They said there wasn't. So we really blossomed the program into tackling all those kind of areas that needed some sprucing up. So how, how many uh, offenders in, on any given day might be out on a shine crew? And uh, would, would, if I was out in the community, might I notice you know, and see them and know who they are? You would probably think that they're just public works uh, employees. They will suit up in the reflective vest if they're anywhere near a roadway and be out there working with weed eaters and, and uh, chainsaws and rakes and hoes and trying to do things that, you know, need to be picked up, labor component type style work. And uh, they work uh, between 20 and 40 a day. Uh, most days it's closer to 20 and uh, they've made a huge impact. Okay, and uh, one, one of the points that you've made recently with the discussion about the jail, about raising taxes, perhaps to build a new jail, uh, is that uh, uh, shine as an alternative to keeping people out of jail is, is not easy time. It, it, it's, it's not just lying around in jail cell or something. Exactly right. I, I would actually argue that it's the toughest form of punishment on crime because, you know, particularly right now it's very hot, but it's also cold in the winter. It's wet on rainy days. And unless it's lightning, we're working outside. And when it's lightning, we go work inside and scrubbing floors and, you know, doing things that are heavy lifting, you know, moving files around. We make use of every single business day. And as a result, we've seen tremendous success in the recidivism rate. People do not want to have this experience again. And yet, combined also with an attitude of appreciation in a lot of times, not everyone, certainly, but where they've said, you know, you still, as bad as this was, and this was, this was punishment, I still got to go home, tuck my kids in bed at night. I didn't wind up having to miss my kids' little league games this weekend. Because a lot of times, if they're employed, a judge will sentence them to weekend service where they have to go check themselves in Friday afternoon at the jail and they're released maybe first thing Monday morning. And so okay. they're missing out a lot of life. They, they miss their kids, the, the ball games, they miss family time. Shine enables them to work on a weekday, mm -hmm. but work that around their work schedule. They, they, can, they can work, they can keep up their child payments if they have, child support payments if they have those. Right and otherwise maintain and build a life in the community. Exactly, and what they do for paying back their debt with their time on the Shine Crew does not pay off any of their services. There's some confusion about that. They still have those bills waiting for them. They'll have to go work and do things after their time on the Shine Crew, but they can work flexible hours on the Shine Crew around their jobs. So it's all about preserving the unit and trying to keep them as close as can to a productive citizen. And, and Shine is a, a product of District 2 or a product of the Oklahoma County Commission? What's sort of the, the, the vehicle that puts money into the program, that organizes the program, that gets supervisors out in the field? I led a team of uh, other leaders like the district attorney and the sheriff and the public defender when we came up with the concept of it. And it started as a pilot program administered by District 2, but we operate it countywide. So it's anywhere in Oklahoma County and it's been replicated in about five other counties now throughout the state. We were the model. It's also been replicated in Africa and it's being considered in China. 
all of which is just a direct result of watching us on the internet and seeing these kind of ways of dealing with incarceration costs. This is an international problem, not limited to here, and yet you still want to instill law and order and have discipline and consequences for people who make bad choices. And so I'm, I'm really proud of how all that's worked out, and the other commissioners have supported me in doing this program, so certainly it's been a unanimous effort. So whose cooperation do you need in order to expand it? You know, more, really, more we can just provide the framework, and it all depends on the participation of the judicial system. So the judges, the district attorney, public defenders, defense attorneys, they all have to agree because most of these are settled in plea agreements. They're not usually coming in the form of a trial sentence. So uh, that a lot of times comes to the judge with both parties saying, yes, Your Honor, we agree, and then he signs off or she signs off on it. And so we're asking that all of them better utilize this. And some say, well, they just sent them to community service because that's what the, the sentence merited. And if they were a stiffer sentence, then they should go to jail and toss them in the slammer and toss away the key. Well, the problem with that is it gives them perfect license to be an irresponsible citizen. You and I are picking up the tab on that with our fellow taxpayers, and they're not doing anything productive in the community. So if they do say, all right, you're going to do community service, but you're not going to do just like the 40-hour stint of a low-rate offender. You're going to do 500 hours, or in a case or two, we've had of 1,000 hours. We've had one individual sentenced to 10,000 hours. And granted, it's over a long, extended period of time, but they said in lieu of prison, in lieu of county jail time, depending on their sentences, you're going to do this. And you're going to have to do this until you pay this all off, you know, in terms of the hours you owe this community. And I assure you, the message comes across loud and clear. And, and we're, we're not talking here about somebody who went into a 7-Eleven with a handgun and robbed it or something Absolutely like that. We're not. talking about non-violent, low-level offenders, per, perhaps uh, uh, drug offenses, things like that. Hot check riders, deadbeat parents not paying child support. There could be a person that had a cocktail too many and started to drive and got a DUI charge. All serious, of course, and nobody's endorsing any kind of crime, but they are not the sort of crimes that deserve the taxpayers to have to pay to keep them locked up and segregated from society. It's just not being tough on crime, number one. It's certainly not being smart on crime, number two. The, those are two terms we've heard a lot uh, in, in the past week or 10 days as the proposal to perhaps build a new jail has been formulated. The county uh, engineer, Stacy Trumbo, said that the county needs to be, has been, and, and the mantra, I think was the word he used, has been, be tough on crime. He said what we need to do is be smart on crime in order to solve the problems that are facing the county. I agree with that. And to segue into my own position on the jail is that's one reason why I've not favored a top to bottom brand new jail. I believe if we build it, they will fill it. I think we already saw that with federal inmates first being removed from the county jail and then here recently in the past 12 months we saw the loss of most of the Department of Corrections here and the Oklahoma employees, I mean uh, trustees that were removed. And as a result, I thought we would see some relief that would be something we could brag about to the Department of Justice that we've alleviated pressure on this existing structure and instead our jail cells filled right back up and we were at levels that we had before we had shine you know which shine definitely you can point to has siphoned off a number of people who otherwise were in jail mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the acronym start helping impacted neighborhoods everywhere anticipates a push for maps for neighborhoods which is something that we're going to be talking about here at the Oklahoma and on Monday um, do you feel as though Shine has been ahead of the curve in addressing concerns about neighborhood safety and livability? I certainly was hearing from the public. You know, it's not often I'll get a phone call about um, things that are really related to the purview of what a county commissioner historically has done. They would say, you know, grass is too high. Uh, I just have, you know, a vagrant camp living here that I can't seem to get out of our local neighborhood park, or we know that they're living under the highway. You know, all these different multi-jurisdictional issues, and Shine really went ahead and addressed a lot of that. My general premise has not been to worry about whose fault it is, whose responsibility ought to clean it up, or why it was allowed to ever exist like that. It's to roll up our sleeves and say, let's just get this done and get on down the road. 
And so, in that sense, perhaps it's been ahead, but it was certainly in response to the outcry from the community who have been making their voice heard quite clear. The, uh, uh, I, I mentioned to you earlier, uh, I, I thought that this kind of program was rather common, and I, I'm somewhat uh, baffled, I guess, about why a program like this wouldn't take off and grow as much as, as its potential, and you said uh, that uh, you think that it's operating in terms of its money saving potential at perhaps 10% of what it could do and that it could save a million dollars a year for taxpayers. Additional. Uh, I, I think we're already around that and I think we could easily double that. And, and why I mean that is because the number of participants that go through our court dockets every year, we only get a fraction of them to the Shine crew. And so I know just from sheer stats looking at the courthouse dockets that we have many, many more that could be that are otherwise being dealt with. Either they're going after them for a financial attack, which is probably cost prohibitive for most of the participants involved. They're already in trouble and they're going to have other court fees and legal lawyer fees. And then other times they're obviously clearly going to jail. As I suggested, the jail numbers are back up, you know, where we were before Shine was even created. The... Uh uh, federal government ha has been uh, in a position of oversight through this memorandum of understanding with uh, the county jail for I think it's about six years now and uh, there there seems to be a difference of opinion now that uh, uh, the, an assistant district attorney has come to the study committee that worked on the, uh, the jail proposal and said that the US Justice Department is moving toward filing a lawsuit seems to be a difference of opinion about whether that's a credible threat or not. What do you think? Well, I think that there's a possibility for sure, but what I think that means is where there's been some confusion. I don't think there's a financial ramification in this memorandum of understanding. That isn't to say they might not issue another one. And it also isn't to say that they might not shut down the jail and we have to figure out where to stash 2,800 inmates tomorrow, which would be, of course, a catastrophic thing. That having been said, I personally do not believe that's what their interest is in doing. They know that as a community we can't absorb that. I think that we have received positive reaction from them every time we give a report, understanding that we're working in the confines of all of our limited resources we have at the disposal. And I've even heard empathy and understanding that polling indicates that the public's not interested in supporting a new jail. So I think that they just are looking for us to do everything within our power to try to address as many issues as we can and have generally given us credit for doing so. And community service, expanded community service, one step. It has been a major path. thing that we've talked about, and at least in the phone calls that I've been a party to, it's been in all the written responses we've given to the DOJ where we've bragged about the number of participants that are otherwise being sentenced to shine and the positive outcome of that, which includes a reduction in the recidivism rate. So we're helping the protracted numbers out in the future not be as high as they otherwise would have been historically. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thanks very much. Uh, again, I'm Bill Crum from News OK in the Oklahoma. I've been here today with Brian Wan, the District 2 County Commissioner. Uh, we've been talking about the jail, we've been talking about SHINE, which is a community service program, and looking ahead to uh, what, what may come as uh, th this story unfolds about uh, the jail and the, and the problems that have plagued it really since it was opened in 1992. Brian, thanks very much for being here with us. Thank you very we much. We appreciate it. Thank you.